Hey guys, so now that we have reviewed the basics of work, I want to look into a few special cases of work. Cases where work is going to be negative or zero. Let's check it out. So, first of all, work and energy are both scalars, right? Remember, work and, gener and energy are generally the same thing, basically the same thing. They're both measured in joules, and work is just energy being transferred. They're both scalars, which means they have no direction. So if you have 100 joules of work, that's not pointing in any direction. You just have it, okay? But even though they have no direction, they could be positive or negative, okay? Depending on the direction of force, force has direction, and displacement, displacement has direction. So depending on the direction of those two, work done by a force can be either positive, negative, or zero, okay? So, and I think it's helpful if you understand this uh, conceptually. So positive work is when the force is done or the force acts in the direction of motion. In direction of motion. Negative work is when you're opposite to motion. So let's put that in here, opposite to motion. And if you're neither directly in the direction or uh, nor directly against work, if instead you're just sort of off to the side, if you are perpendicular to the direction of motion, perpendicular has this symbol here, 90 degrees, then your work will be zero. The force will do no work. Okay? One way that you can think about this that I think is useful is positive work is when a, f a force does positive work, if it helps motion, if a, a, a force does negative work, if it hurts motion, and a, uh, and a force does zero work, if it does not affect the motion at all, okay? So this box here is moving to the right with, uh, that's the direction of delta x. Let's say it's moving to the right because I'm pushing with the force F, and let's say there's also a kinetic friction holding me back a little bit, mg down and normal up, okay? Normal up. So. F is in the direction of motion, so I'm going to say that the work done by F would be positive. Friction is opposite to motion, so the work done by friction, kinetic, is negative. Normal is perpendicular to the motion. I'm moving to the right. Normal is up. That's 90 degrees right there. So the work done by normal will be zero. And MG is also perpendicular to the motion, right? So the work done by mg is also zero, okay? So positive towards it, away from it, or against it is negative, perpendicular is zero, and that's it, okay? Let's do an example here, then I'll mention a few more things, and then you guys will do a practice problem, okay? A six kilogram box sits on a level surface. The coefficient of friction between you and the surface is 0.7. So let me write this over here. Mu is 0.7 uh, between the box and the surface. You pull horizontally on it um, with a force of 50 for a distance of 8 meters. Distance of 8 meters. Okay. Um, I want to know what is the work done by U. This means the work done by F, okay? Work done by U means the work done by F. Well, let's see. This is F D cosine of theta. Your force is 50. The distance is 8. What about the direction? Well, let's draw this. I'm pulling this way, and I'm pulling this way, and it moves this way. This angle between these two, since they're perpendicular, I'm sorry, since they're parallel to each other, right? They're parallel to each other like this, um, is zero. So this is going to be the cosine of zero. And here you get 400 joules. Okay, 400 joules. Uh, what about the work done by friction? The work done by friction, this is kinetic friction because it's going to be sliding. There is some friction here. Friction kinetic. So the work done by a force is that force d cosine of theta. So the work done by friction is friction d cosine of theta. But I have to calculate friction. So let's do that real quick. Friction is mu normal. I know mu is 0.7. What about normal? Well, normal here is going to be simply mg. 
So I can replace this with mg and then eventually plug in mg. So m is 6, g is, we're going to use 10 just for the sake of making this faster and this is 42 newtons. So friction is 42. Notice how I don't plug in friction as a negative. Remember these forces always get plugged in, f and d always get plugged in to the equation as a positive even if the force is going against you. The distance is 8 and the cosine of theta. Now here we have to be careful because you're moving to the right but friction is going to the left. And the angle between these two, when you have two things like this, okay, in opposite directions, the angle between those two is 180, 180 degrees. And if you do the cosine of 180 in the calculator, it's not 1, it's negative 1. Okay, which means that this is negative whatever these two numbers are. So negative 336 joules, negative 336 joules. Cool. Um, part C, I want to know the work done by weight. Now the work done by the weight force can be written as the work done by, sometimes this is called, this, called the work done by gravity. Um, but it's really the work done by the force of gravity, mg. But these are sort of used interchangeably. And again, the work done by any force is the force, mg, not just g, distance, cosine of theta. mg is the mass is 6, so mg is 60. Distance is 8, cosine of theta. Well, I am moving to the right, that's my delta x, but mg is going down. The angle between these two guys is 90. So this is the cosine of 90. And you put in a calculator and the cosine of 90 is 0. So guess what? It doesn't matter what this is. The work done by gravity is 0. And the idea here is that gravity doesn't make you faster or slower. It doesn't hurt the motion or help the motion. It doesn't really effectively do anything to the motion. Okay? You could have done this whole thing really fa much faster by just realizing, hey, it's perpendicular. It makes 90 degrees, so there's no angle. I'm sorry, so there's no work. That's what's going to happen with normal. Normal, the work done by normal, we're going to know right away it's zero because normal is perpendicular to my displacement. You can put a little perpendicular symbol here. Okay, and that's it. So, all of this stuff about positive and negative and zero all come from the fact that you get different angles. Here, let me write these angles here real quick. F has an angle of zero degrees, and the cosine of zero is one. This guy here has an angle of 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is zero, so there is no work. This guy makes an angle of 180 degrees with delta x, and the cosine of 180 is negative one. That's why you get a negative uh, work because the cosine turns out to be negative. And here, if you go counting from this side here, or the shortest, uh, the smallest angle between them, the angle here again is 90 degrees. That's why the work will be zero. Cool? So hopefully you got that. I want to make a few more points here, uh, which is basically just a redo of uh, a recap of some of the stuff that we talked about. So here we did the work done by kinetic friction. I want to highlight this here. The work done by kinetic friction was F D, okay? The work done by kinetic friction was F K D cosine of theta. But kinetic friction will always oppose motion. If you're moving this way, kinetic friction is this way and vice versa, right? So no matter which way you're going, if you're going that way, kinetic friction is this way. So this angle here will always be a 180 for kinetic friction. So we don't have to do this over and over again. The cosine of 180 is negative 1. So we can simplify this and say that the work done by kinetic friction is simply negative Fd. Okay, negative Fd. Now technically that's kinetic friction. Static friction is different. Okay, so this might be a useful sort of shortcut. One really good thing about that equation is that you don't get caught up trying to pick an angle uh, when you're writing the full uh, work equation, which might end up causing you to pick the wrong angle, right? Uh, and then here it's always going to be negative. You don't have to worry about angles and whatnot. Cool. Um, one thing that you should know is that kinetic friction dissipates, that's the magic word, dissipates mechanical energy into heat. 
Okay, I mentioned this earlier, but just revisiting here, heat, uh, and heat is thermal energy. So it dissipates, it burns mechanical energy into heat, okay? Um, some questions will ask you how much mechanical energy was lost by an object or how much energy was dissipated, dissipated again comes from here, by an object. And the idea is that in this problem up here, um, F gave me 400 joules of energy and the work done by friction was negative 336, which means friction stole, took away 336 joules of energy from the system. So that's the amount of energy dissipated. The amount of energy dissipated is the work done by kinetic friction. So you just have to sort of translate that in your head. Now, that being said, if my work was negative 336, I don't say that I lost 300, negative 336, right? If you lose 10 bucks, you wouldn't say I lost negative $10. You just say I lost $10. So this is going to be the positive work, okay? So in this case, how much energy did you lose? You wouldn't say I lost negative 336. You'd say I lost 336. So it's the positive of the work done by friction, which is this equation right here, which you can also think of it as just simply FD. The work done by friction, negative FD the amount of energy dissipated, positive FD, okay? The last point that I wanna make here before I go and do this practice problem is some forces will never do work. In other words, the work done by those forces is always going to be zero. Why? Because they're always perpendicular to the motion. Normal, by definition, that's what normal means. It's perpendicular to the surface, and if you're moving along the surface, normal is up, perpendicular, right? No matter where you are, normal is always perpendicular. Centripetal forces, again, by definition, centripetal forces, if you're going a circle, you're going, this is the direction, the instantaneous direction of your displacement. You're temporarily going that way and obviously readjust. But then some force will pull you to the middle here, whatever force that is. Any force that acts as a centripetal force does no work. So if I'm spinning something with a tension, the work done by tension is zero. That's because they make 90 degrees everywhere you are. Same thing with MGY. MGY is always opposite to normal, right here. So the work done by MGY is zero. So I think it's helpful if you remember these because you can knock them out faster, okay? So from now on, when we get asked these questions, I'm just gonna say zero because you're expected to remember those, okay? And I might from time to time remind you that it's because it's perpendicular where it makes 90 degrees with the displacement. Cool? Let's try this practice problem here. I have a box on a surface, and then we're gonna pull in the box, it starts moving, whatnot, and I wanna know the work done by all these different forces here. And then there's a bonus question here. Um, let's give this a shot.